Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo Grandmaster on the Devil's Lair, which is this week's Grandmaster, obviously. I'm doing it on Warlock, Top Tree Innova. I'm using, as my setup, I am using Nightwatch. I put Major Spec on it. I'm using Tiku's Divination, which I have done the cat list for. The Swarm Adept, which is the weapon you get from this. And as you can see there, I've got Adept Big One Spec. I'm using basically a Warmind Cell build, uh, Fire Team Medic, uh, Rage of the Warmind, Global Reach, and Wrath of Rasputin. I have got Elemental Light on my boots, and that's so that if I pick up a Font of Light, it'll recharge some of my abilities faster. Uh, machine Gun Scavenger, Arrow Scavenger on my boots, uh, Sunder and Glare. I've got Sunder and Glare on my Bond, and that basically as rapid precision hits from range will weaken that enemy, which is really, really good. And I've got Machine Gun Ammo Finder, Bow Ammo Finder on my helm. I do have a, a stasis uh, mod on my on my Bond. It's for no reason whatsoever. I was going to do a stasis run and then decided not to and never took the mod off. So as you can see here at the start of the strike, uh, or the start of the GM, I just basically ignored all the ads. And came straight here for the most annoying ad in the game. No, not this one specifically. An Overload Captain. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the weapons first. But I am going to come back to this Captain Malarkey. Because this is what spoiled my enjoyment of this uh, GM. So, Tiku's Divination. Pros and cons. Pro, you'll see here. When you do, when you get it right... And uh, you see, you can see right there why I'm using Warmind. Uh, when you get it right, uh, it, you, you, you get double numbers, big numbers. You hit fire the first one to attach some explosive bows, some explosive, uh, uh, explosive tip arrows. And then you hit it hit again with a crit. You get the explosion, you get the crit damage, and then you get double that for the explosion. So... Big damage, and obviously we've got Overload Bomb and uh, Barrier Scout, in case I didn't mention that, but I'm pretty sure you guys knew that. My Scout Rifles for the, the, the champions, the Barrier champions. But Tiku's is really good for DPS, but when you're doing stuff like this, that involves a long, long trek, then ammo comes into play, because as I've already said, hit fire to get the first thing, and just charge our grenade. I'm throwing that down there because we want rid of the, the acolytes that are at the bottom. Because we're going to be running past. We're going to try and entice the champion up here. And then we're going to go down to the stairs. And uh, and uh, take this champion from the stairs. Yeah, so Tico's Divination. For it to work well, I think you start with like 61 in the mag. Uh, that's... Doing it like this because you don't get a lot of damage from the, you don't you, you don't do a lot of damage with the hip fire. So basically, the hip fire is to attach explosive bolts to the ad. So you're actually getting thirty shots from full magazine or full full reserves. So really good for DPS, not so good for ammo. And and that will come into play because we are going to run out of ammo a few times here. Uh, the first time I beat this, it was two, hour lo two, two hours, very first time. I didn't know this strike as a master because I did I hadn't done it before as a master, so I didn't know the champion spawns and what have you. But if we're talking about how many times it took me to do this, if we're, if we're talking about getting past this part and the next part, if we're, if we're saying, well, because I came in here a heap of times but couldn't predictably work it out to beat this guy and figured... Being up top at the stairs, too close range for the, the, the barrier knights are really, really, really high damage adds. The, 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 those arc cannons really, really slap you. Big hits. Uh, there is an acolyte. I just caught him at the corner of my eye. I'm just going to use my my uh, swarm just to whittle him down. The, the, in a close in close proximity, they do a lot of damage, so it's it's not really worth being that close to them. So I figured if I could get past them and attack them from range. Normally, what you will have here is 
you'll normally have a wizard and, and a heap of adds. We don't have that because we activated the champion. Obviously, when we when we ran past the champion, we activated this champion. So the whole time we've been fighting the barrier, this champion has been fighting the wizard and has took out most of the adds for us. Yay. Now, so we've spoke about Tico's divination. Because let's be honest, guys, this is a 90-minute GM. So I am going to be going in to de in depth with all the weapons going through this and the strategies and maybe other things that would be just you know just as good. It's not just going to be what I'm doing on the screen. So I'm also going to do this as a three-part. Now, it's all going to be one video, but I'm... I'm basically going to do this as a three-part. I'll do the. Uh, we're going to do up to the, the. We're going to do up to this main room coming up, and I'll cut it there. Then we're going to do the the tank room, as I call it, the open area with the spider tank. We're going to do that, and then we'll do the boss. So three different. I'll I'll, I'll time time stamp them in the, in on the video so you guys can just go straight to them because. I'm not going to keep saying it, but you guys know it's a 90-minute run, which I'm happy with because the first run was two hours. So, let's talk a little bit about what we see on the screen for just for a second. The, in this area, the, the, this is actually it's actually a nasty little area. Just this part, part before, the, we haven't even started this area proper. This part here, you've got everything in this kind of short area. You, you've got a barrier champion, you've got an overload champion. Arc shielded knight, arc shielded captain, two solar shielded wizards, snipers, <laughs> and acolytes. All in this little area. So, here's what I was trying to do with this area. Here's what I was trying to achieve. I was trying to do damage to everything at the same time. <laughs> Not the best idea. I want... You seen when we came up into the first area, uh, as I explained, the overload champion had killed the wizard. So what I'm trying to do, or what I do try and do, and I do it ag again in, in another area because we'll get back to the Overlord Champions and why they really annoy me. We want the Overlord Champion to damage the barrier because the barrier is like a big slugger, but not really clever. Don't really have a lot about him. Uh, you can see here I'm looking for the barrier. I can weaken the barrier with multiple crits for everyone. So if I weaken him, he's getting weakened by everybody. And you can see there just how much damage uh, the, the captains can do against uh, against these uh, these ads because the captain finished off one of those wizards. It did help that the wizard was solar. You see there, taking big damage. You know, that captain. Annoyingly, champions can, will do that. They will regen their health quite quite easily. So, what we're going to do now is it didn't seem uh, it didn't seem very efficient to be trying to take all the ads down. So, at the same time, so what what you really want to do is get rid of the arc shielded guys first, because they're just they're not they're not worth ha those guys aren't worth having up, and you want to leave it that it's just you and a couple of champions. Now, sometimes you'll get to take this barrier champion out when you first come into this area. If he stays down where we are now, just to the right of where we are. If he stays there for long enough, just make sure there's no additional falling at the back. Because those grenades will kill you. If, if enough of them hit you at the same time, they will kill you. When you first come in, the, f the, the first thing I tried to deal with in this area was the, the, the vandals. The snipers at the back, on top of the walkway, right behind the overload champion. Want rid of them straight away, because the, yeah, there's there's no point in trying to do what we're doing right here if there's two snipers up. So as you can see now, I'm working on the barrier. The reason I'm working on the barrier is, as I said, he's he's a slugger. He's not very clever, not very very uh, intelligent, uh, not very intelligent uh, in regards to uh, his movement or his, you know. Very, very easy to control. Overloads are another matter. And that Nova is the first of two Novas that I thought would have went below a structure and didn't just like completely just hit the edge of something and that was the end of the Nova. Uh, but it, 
Last time I'm going to say it, but it is a 90 minute video, so I'm allowed two kind of whiffs in 90 minutes. So once you've got the barrier champion down, which we have now, now this is, this is a top tip about the overloads, right? Overloads are annoying. I told you we were going to come back to this before we go through the other weapons. And, and overloads are annoying, especially with captains. Now, Minotaurs are really, really annoying as well, to be fair. Uh, and the reason why they're so annoying is, the, regardless of if you're hitting them, as you can see here, I'm, I'm still keeping it on. You can see I'm hip firing. Now, there's a perfect, I'll, I'll just digress a second. There's a perfect draw on the divination. And you'll notice if, if, you, if you get into a rhythm of pulling that perfect draw with Sunder and Glare, you can see the damage kept going up. And eventually, I think the highest I've had it for for that explosive damage was 11,000. That's per hit. And you're also getting the arrow hit at like 5,000 5, and odds. So, yeah, the, the, back to the overloads. You can see there we've activated that. This is where we're going to be for this whole fight down here. Uh, I, I, I always try and stick a grenade onto those, the ads that are coming in here. Always try and put a grenade on them, just just to kind of, just to kind of control them. And you'll see as well with the divination. Divination sometimes decides to track something different. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about that. I was just stick another grenade on him. Sometimes that's not the best way to do it, because if he's taking, it seems like if he's taking too much damage, he'll just regen out and you know. If he's not happy with the amount of damage you're putting on, he will regen. At the boss, there are two, you get two sets of two Overload Champions. I think we'll talk more about that then because we've got time there. I know it sounds crazy, we've got time to talk about Overload Champions at the boss, but we don't have it here. There's just a lot going on in this point. This is, this is probably the most hectic it's going to be. The boss room is pretty hectic, but this, it's just a sustained... Uh, a battle, this room is a sustained battle with a lot of champions, a lot going on, but not too difficult to control. So, we'll talk about the overloads when we get to the boss. In this room, this is where you're going to come, once you've activated it. And as you can see, we already, in the first wave, we got an overload, right? You're going to have snipers, you're going to have... Snipe us up on that walkway just to the left, just to just to the left of where I'm aiming right now. You're gonna have an elite sniper twice. I think wave two and wave three. You're gonna get an elite sniper on the walkway at the back. So you've got those snipers there, and then to the right, just for that. I don't know if you can just see that captain is uh, there's art captain up to the right. There's a walkway just above him. You're gonna get an uh, uh, an elite sniper up there. Even once you finish this area. There'll probably be snipers still lying about because when you when you finish it and the music stops, you get uh, you still ads. You'll always have, and this is only in the first wave. You'll have those a set of ads there. You'll have oh man, it's just really difficult to to explain exactly what's going to come in because they just it's hot and heavy. They're just going to constantly come in. I'm looking to make sure that nothing's going to push because I'm I'm expecting a set of drag. There we go, and the drag, <laughs> these drag are coming with the captain shotguns. Basically, they're all coming with Lord of Wolves. So once you've cleared them out, and, and you, you've cleared the snipers, you might have to push up for the sniper. He, he sometimes just hides. You're going to get these. Now get used to these. This wave. Get used to this wave of... Uh, this wave of uh, shanks. Because it won't be... You know, this is going to be a feature. Now, Tikus, obviously, because that's why I've got it on, Tikus can produce war mine cells. If you have Wrath of Rasputin, which I put on the channel, that he was selling it and it was a top tier mod. Because once you've got it and you start producing war mine cells with the solar splash damage, having it on means that the, the war mined explosions can create their own war mine cells. And that's exactly what happened there. So, got the snipers down, you've waited for your shanks, the last thing you should have in this first wave is an arc captain. 
So he'll always be, he'll teleport constantly around here. And once you kill him, you're right back, because that's your, that's your fallen wave. Wave one, fallen. Wave two, uh, wave two and wave three kind of mold into each other, to be fair. Wave two is hive. So you're going to get a barrier champion. You are going to get uh, fallen here as well. But I, I, it's no, notable for how many fallen, or how many hive there are here. So you've got your two wizards again. So we are doing the hip fire. And then, and then trying to get a shot to produce that explosion. Uh, because it is, it, it's big damage, but it's also a chance to make warming cells. So here's your champion. Now beforehand, I was trying, when I was working this run out, in, in the first run I'd done, which may have, as I might have said, it's a two hour run. In the first run, I killed this champion before he went up. This run, I'm leaving him. And the reason I'm leaving him is hoping that when the next wave of Fallen come out, and we get the two barriers, the two overloads. Maybe this this champion can take the focus off of one of these these uh, overloads. Spoiler alert, he didn't. But it, it, I was hoping that he did. I was I was hopeful that I wouldn't have to deal with both of them at the same time because, oh man, these overload champions are just the bane of my life. But as I say, we'll talk more about that at the end. So. You will get these arc shielded knights, arc shielded captains. You see there, you can see, you've probably seen I was hit firing that elite sniper at the back. So he can't do any damage to us here. He's, he has, his powers aren't aren't that good. But uh, I didn't want to give him the chance because best laid plans. You think, oh, I'm safe here, and then you realise you're not. And as a war mind, nice little war mind, just clear a couple of ads there. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna go. There's a heap of ammo here. There's still an arc shielded captain. The the, the the biggest the biggest your biggest threats when you're doing stuff like this is gonna uh, this one especially probably gonna be the captains. They are gonna be your biggest threat because their shotgun is so strong and their movement is so erratic that they can teleport right up next to you and there was, you know, one burst from that shorty and there is nothing, you know, Phil Winters Lie ain't got nothing on this. There's nothing you can do if they teleport right up in front of you and unleash a barrage of, of, of that shotgun. So if there, if there are, if there are uh, captains up, you need to be so, and if it's those cat, I mean, saying the, the solar captains, the easy ones, the arc captains, they're the nightmare. So, luckily, the captains at the boss are the 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 overload captains at the boss are the solar ones. So, I suppose that's something. So now we've got, as you can see, defend the ghost, security measures deactivated, two of three. So we took all the ads out, and that has now put us straight into the third wave. Now you can see up there, because I've left so many ads up, the overloads are caught between what they're going to do. Are they going to come after me? Are they, they going to come after the chat? The, the ads? Lovely war main cell explosion there. You see? They're not looking at me predominantly. So, hopefully... Because if they're both there together, it's just a real difficult time if they're both there together. You will run out of ammo here. So, what I'm doing is hit firing and then peeking to get the... Now you can see now I've got both of them. And I'd lost... I lost sight of which one I was damaging. So, that there is no simple way to do this part but as you can see almost got this one down almost lost sight of him again if you can take the if you can take one down it's so much easier and you can see i've only got 10 10 rounds left 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around this side and I'm going to stop him. And then I can come down and look for ammo. It's taking a chance, but I needed the ammunition. Now I've got not the greatest amount, but 22 is better than 10. So as you can see, he, they, they, they've gone away. They've moved up there, so I'm just going to take this opportunity just to clear any of the stragglers, see if any of them drop any more primary. I, I really don't want to take the chance of running too far up. There's primary there. There we go. So now I've got plenty of bow arrow for the overload. So when you're up here, the only time you're really going to be, like, affected is, uh, is when the two overloads are here. Now I'm going to take this opportunity while whilst this uh, barrier champion is is kind of being attacked from all sides. So you'll see I'm getting constant yellow numbers. You can see his health going right down there. You'll see, did you see that white kind of uh, glow, that flash that the weapon gets? That is when you have weakened an enemy. So when you're using Sunder and Glare, when you've weakened the enemy, what you get is that glare multiple precision shots that was enough range for, for the glare to work so now this overload's come back to test his strength and we're just going to do the same thing so hit fire and then work out your your optimal uh, bow pull time see there if you if you if you don't keep the sustained damage on them I mean, it's really annoying. You can see, um, as if you could have heard me. It's overloads, man. Just absolutely hate. They're the worst. They're the worst champion. Because it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, we were going to talk about this at the boss. I'll touch upon it right now. Because this, there's two overloads in the game that are just like two sets of overloads that are just the worst. And this is the first set. It doesn't matter if you put sustained damage on them. You know? It does not matter. If they want to teleport away and regen full health, they will. There's no way you can stop them. There's absolutely no way you can stop them. I have tried during this run, as I said at the start, uh, I, I, I had a mod on for... Uh, I had a mod on for stasis because I, was, I thought, I'll freeze them. Freezing them just annoys them. Because what happens is, especially when you're doing it solo, what happens is, when you freeze them, it, it gives them uh, multiple stuns. It's like the stun doesn't actually, the, 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 the disruption doesn't actually count. And they just regen health as you're going. It's, it's, I don't know if it's just this, just this uh, GM, but overloads are just, there's no predictable way to stop them. Especially when they've got this amount amount of health and we've got bows. Because if you if you put damage on them with heavy and you don't time coming back to the other weapon fast enough, they will just auto-teleport and then teleport back with full health. It's like you've got to keep hitting them with the overload weapon. So that's that area done. That, as you can see, when we took out the, the, the barrier champion, the overload champion had nobody to fight. So he, he came for us, which is what we wanted barrier was down the overload didn't take too long to get to put down and then as i said when you get that mission complete malarkey there's still a heap of adds up so just be wary when you come out and that is this area just about done our next area is going to be the open area of the tank which is slightly more uh annoying than this area <laughs> i wouldn't say annoying uh, when, when you're taking this overload out, if you range these overloads, you get one at a time. Quite easy, quite easy to isolate and to just... If you're far enough away, you're not a threat, they will not teleport nearly as badly. But this is one of the arc ones. You can see how much they really hurt with the stream of tracking arc shots. So, just do it from, do it from down here. Make sure you can get decent shots on the head. If you can't get crit shots, don't don't let yourself go too long without a crit, uh, or at least a shot on them. Just hit fire them. 
just to keep that damage on them. And that's this area done. We're moving towards the next area, which is, uh, most you will know, is the spider tank room. So here we are guys, we're at the spider tank room, the open area. As soon as you come out here, you're going to have a barrier and you're going to have these snipers up on the roof. You're going to have a, a bunch of ads. And what we're going to do is just quickly throw the Nova because the super can kill any ads that are tethered. So as you can see, I managed to get a couple of kills. Uh, just make sure that the barrier, what I like to try and do, doesn't always work as you'll see here uh i had to reload so the barrier got a chance to get his full shield back up so now i'm just going to make sure that none of the heavy hitting ads can can hit me sometimes you'll have to do that sometimes it's it's uh it's better to uh to uh fight another day than 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 just to stay in the gun battle sometimes it's better to just back away and allow a champion just to regen than put yourself in harm's way so, rule of thumb with, with any champions, whatever weapon you're using, if it's not a bow, because bows don't need to be reloaded, make sure you're reloaded, take out the barrier champion's shield. You can switch to another weapon, but make sure you don't put yourself in a position where you have to reload right at the point where you need to take a barrier champion's shield down, or a champion, stun a champion, disrupt a champion, whatever the case might be. So as you can see, I'm, I'm holding off just to make sure I've either got enough left in the mag or I'm reloading before I switch to a different weapon. The reason I'm not switching at the moment back to the machine gun is because I know the machine gun needs reloaded and it's just not a good time. We know we've got another ad here, so, so let's talk about this area. Now we're going to go out into the area proper. What you're going to have when you first come out here, as you'll see here, uh, I thought I'd missed this. And then the, <laughs> the ads walked into it. So I managed to get half my grenade back. You have these snipers here. Now, they, they are slightly at the edge of my range to be efficient. But they really, really, really hurt. Let's see if Tico's can track. See, the great thing about Tico's that I haven't mentioned maybe is that they track. So, nice. Nice, got a, a cheeky double there. So we know that there's two more, because I think there's four snipers there. I'm just going to grab this ammunition. To start off with, you're going to have those snipers there and these ads here. Take out the sniper on the roof. It allows you to be a little bit more efficient. Watch, always watch out for grenades. So though, you see there, the grenades are just thick and, thick and fast. Uh, and there we go, That's that's all the enemies here. Now, when you're in this area, the, the way it's going to work is when you come in here, you're going to have a heap of enemies. Uh, you've got to take these snipers. Because as you can see, that's how much damage one body shot can do. Because you know these snipers ain't critting you. Uh, so, when you come in here, you're going to have the ads to the left. First off, you're going to have the champion. Take out the, the, take out the ads around the champion if at all possible. And then take the champion. Then your snipers are going to be your next thing. Uh, then you've got the ads on the left. This building, not the building we're aiming at, the building that's on the same level that we are, to the left, you do not want to go past the front, not, not, not the side nearest to you. You do not want to go past that, because the minute you go past that, you will activate uh, the, the wave of ads that's going to come in. So you'll get the tank, you'll get the brigs, You'll get everything. So what I'm trying to do is just take as many of the the little kind of uh, annoying ads that could that could cause us some real problems, and this champion's one of them. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilising the building that we we shouldn't be going past. We're going to utilise that for DPS. Now as you can see, I took a chance because he was so low. And we've got them finished. And I accidentally went past the area. That's why I'm backing away. 
And now we've got everything coming in. Do not go past that area. Something I didn't mention about Tiku's is we're just going to try and throw a big grenade all the way at the back on top of those because you've got elite snipers. There's a lot of things on the platform with, you see there, those resilient vandals. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, ads that come in with the tank. Those elite vandals would have been there anyway. So I'm just backing away here for a second, just waiting. I'm trying to get the brigs so, so, to come up. So when you come in, champions, snipers to the front, adds to the left, take out that overload. Then we're going to get Briggs, and we're going to get, uh, we're going to get Briggs, we've got, and then the tank, you've got adds dotted around, but where we're going to be, once we take the Briggs, we're going to be able to work on the adds from relative safety. I'm, I must add at this point, this is what is known in the trade as a toilet break. I remember going to the toilet here. Uh, but I don't want to cut any of this. I want you guys to see the full run exactly the way I had to do it. I wasn't happy with the, the my first run. It was a two-hour run. That's why I redone it and managed to clean it up. I was much more efficient, as I've already said. And I touched upon this, but I didn't finish it in the first section. If we're talking about the amount of times that I actually came in here and got past that first barrier champion, right? I will count that as, a, as, as, as an attempt. I got it on my fourth attempt. Three out of the... Two out of the three attempts beforehand, I got to this area. So my very first attempt, I got to this area. And and didn't really understand what I was going to be facing with. And I was being really, really reactive. There's the second Nova. I said about the first one that hit an area. I didn't think I was going to hit there. Threw it a little bit higher because from experience I knew if I'd have thrown it on ground level, it actually explodes before it gets to the brig, which is annoying. So I had to kind of hope I'd throw it slightly a bit higher and it would come back down. But yeah, so the, the, I, I got this on my fourth, fourth attempt. My fourth time getting to the room where you've got all the waves of ads, the previous section. But that was kind of a learning thing. I mean, it's a two hour run. A lot of it was I didn't understand, you know, uh, how how to conserve my a ammunition. I felt I I could do it much once I learned it, I could do it much more efficiently. And as I say, I knocked I knocked about thirty five minutes off off the run with this run. So I'm glad I've redone it. But the the one thing you can't escape here, unless I mean you're going to see some runs where they're like m crazy runs. Esoteric, I'm talking about you, that Titan run. I haven't watched it. I don't watch any runs until I've done what I've done. But 45 minutes? All right, then. Okay. I see you. <laughs> I see what you're doing now. 45 minutes on a Titan run. That is insane. Well done. Uh, so I felt like I could be more proactive. So here we are. 90, 35 minutes off the previous run and I reckon I could probably take 15, 20 minutes off this run really and I'll explain where I could have done it so now we've got the brigs out we've got the, got the spider tank out we've, we let one of the brigs come up we've got a brig to our left I'm just taking this one from range and the second weapon as I say we've already spoke about Tiku's the second weapon we're going to talk about isn't the weapon I'm using now. We'll speak about that in a minute. It's the scout rifle. When I was coming in, I'd done a, run, a heap of these runs because obviously I wanted to do it on each subclass. I'd done a, I got all my subclass runs done with with my with with some of my my buddies. And uh, the first couple of runs, I used a sniper. The reason I switched, and there's again pros and cons, and we'll speak about the pros and cons. The, I'll, I'll go back to the divinity as well. Uh, Tiku's divination, the divinity. Tiku's divination. Uh, the reason for the scout rifle was a ammo consumption. You now you're holding what twenty rounds at best with a sniper. You're holding twenty rounds, not efficient enough at all. But it's big damage. So it's not really efficient. So I went with with the scout rifle because Sunder and Glare. I mean, I'm hitting the I'm hitting the boss's leg 
for about four, four, just over 4,000 per crit. With Sunder and Glare, that takes it up, that adds another 25% or something. It's like an extra 1,200, 1,100 points onto it. I felt like that that could really, with the ammo consumption and how much additional damage, you know, the ammo reserves the scout rifle could have, I felt like I could still range targets, but with a lot more, you know, uh, a lot more ammunition. Maybe even in those clutch situations where you can't, and someone that prides himself in being a sniper, you, you don't always get that time to get that perfect shot. Especially when you're taking in, 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 in mouse and keyboard you could, and, and no disrespect to mouse and keyboard players, but they already know, you know, we all know that the accuracy level, the, the accuracy you can have on mouse and keyboard is insane. So, here we go. Uh, I'd, n I'd never actually looked at the time for this, but now I'll just, I'll just put this in now. 45 minutes. That's how long you've got in a GM before you lose your reses. I'd never actually looked at the time. It's not something I was ever really interested in, but we're 30, we were 35 minutes in, and we got in 10 minutes, darkness encroaches. So what that means is you lose all your stored reses. When you're soloing it, it doesn't really matter because you're, you don't plan on resin anyway. Well, you, you're not because it's Grandmaster. You die, you go back to orbit. So, 45 minutes in a fire team. So, we're, 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 on, the, we're on the second the second uh, brig. And as I say, we'll talk about the Night Watch. Uh, so, we've got that ammo consumption. Sunder and Glare uh, is, is the way to go. Put that mod on your class item. It increases... Uh, it weakens, you see that flash down the barrel, it weakens enemies, and, and you get crit numbers, get high high damage crit numbers uh, for all your shots. Now you can see what I've done there, the boss, so the boss has got three attacks, he's got, the, the sorry the boss, the brig has got three attacks. Shoots at you with an arc cannon, which is okay, but e easily dodged. The void cannon hearts so but again you, he kind of charges it up so you can see it when you break break him down and, and you expose his crit point what he will do now is he will he will go up airborne and he'll fire this big solar attack at you this one it has a range that you can when you find out what the range is you can just stay outside of the range of it and just shoot away. So, the negatives with using a scout rifle is the ammo. So we're using a bow, I'm using a scout. As you guys already know, uh, again I will digress, whenever you see a ship coming in, make sure you're in cover, that's sh the ship's hurt. You can see I keep going up on this building, and I'm like Kobe and Grenade, you can see getting Number, 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 number. You add all them up, and you're doing a you know a couple of thousand. Now you'll see, I've weakened them. Let's see if it if if it shows it here. Now I'm getting yellow numbers. When I start shooting them again, it unweakens them, and then I re weaken them. That's what I'm trying to do, is weaken them with the scout, and then hit them with the grenade while he's weakened. There, we've weakened them. And then I will just charge the grenade. Now, I must admit, I was very happy with the grenade throws in this because I don't think I missed one on them. And there, there are some quite extreme grenade throws. You can see the the, the increase of numbers. Uh, I think I missed this grenade, but I didn't miss a grenade on the boss. No, I didn't. Yay. That's what I was aiming for, was the Resilient Vandals. When the, That's the three of them. We took one out to start with, there was four of them. A couple of dregs still there. Now, so, as I was saying, the, the, scout, the, the scout rifle was really good, especially with the Sunder and Glare, very good. Tons of ammo. But you're using the same ammo as you're using on the bow. So if you run out of ammo, which you will do, the game won't give you more bow ammo, because you've still got tons of primary for your scout rifle. 
So that's that's really the only downside that that I could see for having us having the scout rifle versus the the sniper. So we've took down the two brigs. We've done it from safety. I've already explained how how they they work. This area we're in now, believe it or not, is very safe. Now you'll see because I wasn't sure how safe it actually was. Was it? Could I survive the slash damage from his big attack? I just never bothered trying to find out. So what I'm doing now is just doing Tiku's kind of thing where I'm char getting shots charged. You don't do much damage with with the hip fire shot. But as you can see there, you're doing over 11,000. Uh, there it was like 16,000. When you get that perfectly timed bow... Uh, so there is a there is a rhythm to the bow pull, something that you should practice. Uh, there's a rhythm to the the bow throws, the bow pulls. That uh, you see there, I, I I I jumped away because I wasn't sure, but you can see it's different from D1. Now I'm not sure if it was just my experience, but I'm pretty sure in D1 that spider tank could kill you here. He could hit you here. He didn't seem to be able to get his shot over over the lip of this building so what i'm doing here is just getting out that pit you can see there look at that damage just getting that perfect bow bow pull and because if you do repeatable crits you're getting sunder and glare on it as well because you can see we're getting double yellow numbers so again another grenade and it's all good we're just going to expel all of our ammo reserves. Uh, and I've already spoke about the problems with the scout versus... I'm not going into the other ads just yet. As you can see, there's, there's champions and all that. The spider tank is what we're, gonna, we're focusing on, really. Uh, once we take down the tank, then, then, then we can focus on... There's still about four, four champions up. Four or five champions up. Now, ammunition... Big problem in this one. It's because it's a trick. It's because, you know, it's... I mean, with how long this is, with how long this GM takes to complete, we're not actually out of place. It wouldn't be out of place if you saw one of my character take a ring out of his pocket and bugger off someone and try and throw it in a volcano. I mean, this is like Lord of the Rings epic. You are going to run out of ammunition. Having two primaries, that's why I brought up the issue with having two primaries. It's, it's an issue. But, here's the thing about the ammo, especially I'm doing stuff like this, and it, and it works the same way with everything, I think. Any ammunition that you've got lying about, when the game refills your ammo, it will give you it from the floor. So, if you haven't dropped heavy, you won't get any heavy. You know, it's, it's that simple. If you've got no heavy lying about, sometimes, you'll have noticed that when you get your ammo, sometimes, you get... A lot of ammo and then other times you don't get a lot of ammo if you run out of ammo multiple times you'll get you know whatever ammo has been lying about in the strike that you haven't picked up then when you've used up all your reserves and all the stuff that's lying about on the floor then the game just gives you a stock amount and that's when you stop getting heavy so Took out the spider tank. We've done it from range. I, I suggest to do that uh, when when you're in this area. Is, is take out the, the tank and the bridge. See there, I see the ship. I'm off because the ship can do a lot of damage. I suggest taking out the bricks from where I did. The, the right-hand side one from in the room and the left-hand side one from the cover. of There's a big box uh, just on the floor behind us. It gives you cover from... It gives you cover from the tank because you've got to be careful of the tank's attacks. The the, the 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 big cannon attack has because obviously, you know, you're taking more damage in this strike anyway. So you don't want to put yourself in a position where one of the heaviest hitting uh, enemies in here can get a free shot on you with his big attack. Now what I'm looking for here is marauders, those invisible. Uh, they normally hide about under here, right? 
And you can hear them. I can hear them. And I don't want... See, I can hear them, so I don't want to put myself in a position where they are encroaching on me. And I'm just allowing it. There he is. I remember years ago, I think I've said this before in a video. I remember years ago hearing Dato say that console players have a worse time with invisibles because it's harder to track them on console. On PC with the movement and, then, and being able to aim faster and turn faster, it's much easier to track invisibles on, on, on PC. Uh, I don't ever agree with Dato, but he, he got that one right. Uh, he should have added in though, it's easier to do everything on PC. So we're going to try and put a grenade all the way to the back. Which I failed. Just a little bit too high. Uh, so. Took out the Marauders. We are working our way down to the front. So we took out... Uh, we took out the Champion. Of which there are two more uh, Overloads. And there's a barrier up here. So what you'll see here in a minute. I think. Is that we'll start attacking this guy. And then I think another another overload comes out. I could be wrong because I'm um, putting quite a bit on him. And nothing else seems to be coming out. I thought I switched here and started damaging the one on the left. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was another run. Looks like I'm going to beat him. But there is another champion that's going to come out. Another overload. At least one. I'm getting... I'm, I am getting hit quite a bit from this, uh, and he's not doing damage. That, the explosion, the explosion was just knocking my, my aim off. There are still ads up here hiding. So, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful, which is, which is my want. I'm not one of these players that runs about like a, you know, just a, a nutter running about, not caring about, uh, my health. Uh, I like to do things repeatably, and and I, I like to take them methodically. That that's it. I like to be methodical. So coming in and doing doing the Briggs and doing the, doing the 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 spider tank and that the way I've done it is repeatable. Right. So we're gonna see if we can take this barrier down. I think it's the barrier. Now you can just see when I come out there, you could see there's a bunch of ads now on the left. Now what's going to happen here, and it was it was something that I knew was going to happen. I just wanted... There we go. This is what happens. I wanted to see if I could take this barrier out. And I got him so close. But he's just moving too far across. So... And as you can see, because I wasn't hitting him immediately, he got a little bit of regen back. And now he's going to get out of my sights. And now I've got to leave him. That's the problem with champions, but sometimes it's better to just back away and uh, live to fight another day. I knew this overload was here. This is, the, I think, unless another one came out, I think this was the last overload. So, I... Once I moved up to that right hand side, that act that brought out the last couple of ads that, that want out. And what we're going to do is, there's still a captain, you see him just just there, just to the right. There's still an arc shielded captain. He was the one I was worried about because, you know, these the, the overloads are, are just annoying anyway. But the arc captains, they, they, they just seem to have a wider arc of movement, so they, they'll go all over the place. I want to rid of him, the machine gun, which is going to be the next weapon we're going to speak about. Uh, I wanted to make sure that he he wasn't in a position where he, you know, when I was going for the barrier, that he could kind of mess up my plans. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my ammo as well. I'm not doing so great for primary. There's some on the floor. We're going to grab that. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to this this side because I can get a straight view right across. So after these after these enemies are down, we'll take out these enemies here. Uh, I think I eventually have got to go to the other side because that, as I say, that captain pushes over to me. And I I can't really get a decent view on the on the boss. 
So I'm trying to take the captain out, but again, what are you going to do? Nothing you can do when the ads all bunch up like that. So what I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to throw a grenade over there just to see if I can do any extra damage. And now my focus isn't killing the, the barrier. It's breaking the barrier shield so I can attack the captain. But I didn't have to because he thought it would be a good idea to run away. So now, I'm, now I need to go to the left. I know there's other ads on the left, but we need to get rid of that champion now. That that captain, not, he's not a champion. Uh, so he's gone. A couple of more ads, and that's just the barrier. And then, then we're, we are at the main event. We are at the boss. Uh, and w when we get to the boss, I'll speak more about the swarm. Uh... I'm not going to talk about it just now and what I think, you know, the pros and the cons are and how how the boss bat works and what I learned actually doing this run. I learned stuff in this run that, that I didn't know. So I will leave you guys for now with this barrier barrier battle and then I will, ca I will catch back up with you guys at the boss. So here we are guys, we're at the boss, well done if you've made it this far in the run and in the video. Uh, again, leave it in the comments if you if, if you uh, did watch everything, if you did, I am highly impressed. So, boss room, as with most boss rooms, has a predictable pattern of play, uh, uh, Add spawn in a, in, in a certain pattern. And what I didn't know is, uh, I knew that the overloads were going to be really, really, really annoying here. Because whenever you get two overloads coming together, uh, you always have a harder time. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take these two overloads. I've been using my grenade and trying to get Tiku's kind of explosive capabilities to work for me here. Uh... What, what I try and do is I try and isolate one of the champions, but you always get another one, the other one, trying to get involved. As you can see, I'm trying not to get too involved with the other one. I want to keep damaging the one that I've been damaging. Because he's almost dead and it just makes it a little bit easier. And there's one down. Now, another thing about this area is if you... If you uh, if you're outside of this room, you can see here I'm gonna I could run into some trouble here with with ammo. Uh, I'm just trying to keep shots on them. Uh, th this this whole section could have been a ton easier. So now what I've decided, I'm just gonna stun him again. And I'm going to run over here, get this ammo, we're right back to full. But he's teleported, so now he's right back to full. So I'm just going to go down here, and I'm going to go into my spot. That I'm actually going to be in for most of this, which is here. So as you can see, he he now is shooting in a, in a location that he thinks I'm in. And I, obviously I'm not there. So... Once we take down this overload, what you're going to have is, you're going to have, obviously, the boss DPS to start with. And then, you're going to have, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. You're going to have waves of ads. Now, you're always going to get, from my experience, you're always going to get, regardless, you're just going to get shanks every so often. 
right? Even it, regardless if you do no damage to the boss, once you damage the boss a little bit, it's not even tied to like that boss damage from what I can see. It's just once you start damaging the boss at any way, uh, you're gonna get boss. You're gonna get these waves. As you can see, the first wave you get, you're gonna have two arc captains. Now my my suggestion is kind of just focus on the ads that you can see to start with because if you can see them they can see you and if they can see you they can damage you so the areas you'll see me go to all the time look at it is, is out the window that's kind of i don't i don't want to be in a position where i can't move away from the window to do ads uh, to do damage to anything because because of uh because there's ads shooting in the window. So that's the first thing. The second place. I just throw my Nova and get some get some early damage in on the boss. My second thing is. So this area here, I focus on. This area where the box is with the two red things on top of it, just to a right out of this window. And that open uh, that open door, that kind of channel. Just outside the, this door to the left. They are the areas that I focus on because they can... The, the the area just outside the door to the left, they can shoot in the door. So I don't want that to be a thing. I don't want to be needing to... Needing to dodge. This is my safe zone where I'm standing here. So I, uh, you can see those ads there. There will be... I, at different times, vandals will go there. Captains will go in there. The majority of what you'll deal with in there are shanks, but there'll be mar marauders and oh, this is everything. So every now and again, I will chance it and come out and, and go for ammo. Now you might have seen there, you might not have that uh, there's there's primary ammo and and that kind of walkway to that kind of little channel to the left, because we're going to be killing so many ads there. Uh, th there's going to be a constant stream of of. Uh, of ammunition. Now, as you can see, now we've got another wave of uh, another wave of ads, and Tiku is doing its job there. The, the hip fire will, will will attach it to one of the ads, and then if you shoot that ad, it will explode. And if, if there are other ads close to it, the explosive damage will kill them all. Now, you'll always get three in there when the shanks come, and then you'll always get these couple over here. So they all go roughly to the same place. We'll just want to finish these last two. Now, one of those shanks that I just took out there, one of them would have been to the right. He wouldn't have actually have been with the rest of them. So you can see, every time I get a chance, I'm trying to weaken the boss and then put a grenade on the boss. So when he goes up top here, and he brings out his... His... Uh, his uh, protect protective mini servers. You should be expecting to get a wave of ads. Now the wave of ads will vary, uh, but the, I think this is the big wave with the the elite vandals and the elite uh, the resilient vandals. I call them elite, but they're not. There's resilient vandals, resilient vandals, and resilient uh, dreg. That's the most difficult one. I can see I've got ads in there, so I'll just throw a grenade as far to the back as I can. A couple of Explorer shanks, got another shank as well. So this doesn't look like the big wave, so maybe that's the next wave. So the other thing you've got to keep checking. No, this is just a normal wave. Uh, the other thing you need to keep checking is downstairs. Because you will get ads that will congregate at the, just round at the bottom of the stairs. So we're just, as you can see here, I'm just trying to get TQs to to proc, get that explosive damage, maybe get a warming cell, and now I'll charge another grenade, put it back in there. So this boss battle would have been a lot faster if it hadn't have been for the overloads. And you'll see it for yourself. There is absolutely nothing I could have done any different. Overload picks and chooses its time 
to allow you to damage it. Cheeky Explorer hiding there. When you get, so when you come in here, you get the two, the two overloads together. You will get another set of two overloads. And what they do, and what makes it so difficult, is one of them, and it's happened before to me, he'll teleport upstairs, and then he's like all over the place. I'm just going out here. There he is. That's the guy I was looking for. If you're ever pushing out there for ammo, make sure you've got your heavy. So that you, you're not getting involved in a gun battle of such. And never go out when there's tons of ads either. Now, I missed that grenade, and I don't know if you'd have caught it just out the corner of your eye. The reason I missed that grenade is because when you throw a grenade at that one in particular, the one far right, and you'll see it actually later on, he will, he'll, he'll like, teleport out the way of it. And it goes right through him. So what I'm doing now is I'm using t a combination of Tiku's and my machine gun. So while we're doing this, that gives me a chance to talk about the swarm. Man. This is good. Swarm is good. Now I have, this is the Adept version. The Nightfall version is, is really good as well. But I have, as you'd have seen at the start, and I didn't mention it at the start because I wanted to leave it till I was talking about this weapon. I have Adept Big Ones. That is the... The elite, the, the spec that's on it. Now, if you put a boss spec on it, or a major spec, right? Uh, major spec, I believe, works on the boss as well. Because for some reason, it's a server, and it's not affected by boss spec. It's affected by major spec. And major spec is what you would use against champions. Now, we have tested this. A buddy of mine actually went in and tested boss and uh, major spec, and it's major spec for champs. Which, I kind of thought, but I wasn't sure. If I'm being 100% honest, I've never really known. I know, it took me a while to work out the Vorpal procs on all yellow bars, not just bosses. And that's where the problem came, because obviously it says it does more damage against bosses. So the role I've got on this is tap the trigger and dynamic sway reduction. When you get the Adept version, when you masterwork it, it improves nearly all of its stats. So this has got even more stability, but it hits like a truck. It, uh, somebody somebody said to me, uh, one of my clan, it was actually my son, said this, gen this really does feel like a D1 machine gun. If you don't have it, it's worthwhile farming uh, hero playlist to try and get one. Uh, Going with friends to the legend LFG. I, I I have been kind of playing about with the idea of maybe doing Grandmaster carries uh, for subscribers. If you if you know, so anybody be interested in that, leave. If you're a subscriber, uh, don't just if you if your first time comment, uh, I'm probably gonna go down the list. But uh, yeah, uh, it won't matter what what you're on. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox, I'm pretty sure we can uh, we can sort something out. And just helping people get through this. Me and my team, we got this down to like a 35, 35 minute run. Uh, so, yeah. If you're on Xbox, it makes it a ton easier. If you're on PlayStation, I have a PS5. I can come onto PlayStation. I, I would, I, I would, you see? Teleported away. And then reappeared. So only that one at the back right that does it. Uh, we'll work something out. So leave it in the comments if you would like to get this done. Uh, and you're a subscriber. Just, you know. I, I, I will help where I can. And we'll try and get some people this, uh, this machine gun. And the mods, obviously. Now the Adept Big Ones didn't drop on my first, second, third or fourth. It dropped on my fifth. Now I've beat this this GM about seven or eight times this week. Just, I'm trying to get my whole clan the Conqueror title. So, uh, well, the, the the Gilded Conqueror. Next week's will probably be better in a fire team for doing it on multiple uh, subclasses because ne next week's going to be the Arms Dealer, which I'm not going to say is easy, but even the GM's going to be easier than this one. So anyway, 
what makes the swarm so good? Well, really stable. It's it's a it's a it's it's a, it's a very very stable machine gun. It is a 360 RPM, which is the same as the Seventh Surf. Uh, the, the, what I think it's got over the Seventh Surf is it's good. <laughs> it's that simple. I, I've never really been a fan of the Seventh Surf. I feel like it goes all over the place, and even though this has a decent stability. You're looking for on on the serif. I mean, it creates war mine cells, so there's not nothing bad there. But you're looking for Vorpal, clown cartridge, auto loading holster, those those type of things. It just feels like the swarm does more damage all the time. You know, so after you do, after you take out the, just digress for very quickly. After you take out the the mini servers. That's when you get this big wave. You can see now we've got the resilient vandals, resilient, uh, resilient uh, dreg, and the boss now is also shooting at you. Which, if if you're back here, you can get hit. You're not. There's no perfectly safe place, but if you're at the back, it really, it really helps. The grenade also helped so controversy with that grenade is it's not it's not imperative but it just will make things a lot lot easier you've also you're also going to get these marauders so i'm just gonna thread a grenade through there and there should be like two or three of them there was three and there's something else there because after the third one died so i'm i'm, I'm thinking should i waste another grenade there's the other marauder there and there's a grenade. And the boss shot right through there. I was already quite low because of the... Because of the... So I'm going to put that there. <clears throat> because of the grenade. I was already quite low. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when the boss shot through here, his, uh, his damage uh, just kind of put me red back. But <clears throat> because I was already so low... The boss himself didn't actually do a lot of damage. So there's the last Marauder. I've got some ammo in here. Uh, so, as I was saying, this machine gun, all round, I mean, as I say, it's 360, same as the 7th Surf. It's ammo capacity. I'll just throw my Nova. I've got my Nova. I liked, after I clear the wave of ads, that's when I like to put that Nova down. Uh, and you'll see here... It's nice to get that uh, increased damage against the boss with a scout rifle. Ma the mine has got like 60 in the mag, which is a lot higher than any of my 7th uh, Seraphs. Stability, really, really good. And if you get that Adept Big Ones, we, we were, the first time I got it, it was with, with a fire, with, with my clam. And. We're taking out a, a captain, and everybody could notice when I started shooting at the captain. Not because it, because of the mod. So you know, a buddy of mine was like, "Man, you can really tell when you're putting it on because the health just just goes." So I'm gonna quickly dip out here. Now, another thing when you're at when you when you're at this part, and obviously the ads kind of dictate this how fast you can go. Boss does a lot of damage, and because he teleports so much. You're kind of at the mercy of where he's going to be uh, when it comes to damage because he'll teleport, as you've already seen, right in front of the window. And it has, uh, and it's classed as a melee attack. Now, I've just noticed that there's ads downstairs. I'm just going to charge a grenade, throw it in there, see if I can take out a heap of ads here. Now, I didn't know this, as I said to start with, I learned some stuff here that I didn't know. You can just come down here. And damage the boss from here. I knew you could do that. That isn't something I didn't know. But. When the captains come out. And you'll see the captains are out now. I'm pretty sure. He doesn't move. He's like perched in the middle of the map. Because when I actually kill him. There's a heap of ads still up. Now it's not like. I completely ignored the ads. But he just sat in the middle of the map. 
and 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 I just went down and just got a melt on. So you can go downstairs when you're going for ammo when the ads are down and you're looking for ammo. This is this was a tidy grenade. I was very happy with that. Lots of numbers and took out some of the the heavier hitters. Resilient vandal. So I just I know I've got heavy over there. Just take out any ads I can see there. That that resilient vandal, you just you just got to look at him there. When he goes away, he uh he will go into that walkway to the left as well. So if you ever get hit hard like this, just come into this corner. I know that I knew that it was the captain that was damaging me, so I was hoping to be able to you see there the resilient vandal. I was hoping to be able to break the captain's shield so that the grenade would do stuff against the cap. Now his shield's down. I'm gonna try and hit him with the grenade before his shield comes back up. Got that that was probably the vandal that kept coming around the front. And there's the captain. So, uh, when you're going out here to get ammo, you can just, like, go, run straight across this area and jump down the staircase uh, over the other side and just go back underneath. As I'm... I'm a ma ma a ma 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 There he is, there's a cap. Teleported away, as those bloody captains will. Oh, man, wait till you see this overload. This, this run would have been, th this boss battle would have been about ten minutes faster if it hadn't have been for the second captain. I'm just coming out to see if there's any more. See, so I've shown you where the boss is. During this section, now you obviously want to clear as many ads as you can. The boss is just going to sit there. He's going to sit in the same place. So now we've got more shanks. Throw a grenade out. Take those four out that come up there. It, the, the shanks always go to the same places. So three in this section here. Four that go out where the, I just threw my grenade. And then there'll be three over the other side. So you always get ten shanks. There'll be one to the right. There he is. If you don't kill him there, he will go around and eventually join up forces with these two. So I'm just trying to jump just to make my presence known. And that's... That is all the shanks. Now, can I want to see if I can grab any ammunition? So at this point, you just jump down the stairs and go back underneath to get to the room. Now, I could have, as I say, as, as, as I've already said, there were things I didn't know. I could have just damaged the boss from down there. Just make sure there's nothing come up. Because the boss is going to sit there. So, we're just going to throw a quick one over here, pick up this heavy, and then I'm back in, because we're probably going to get more shanks. And I'll throw a grenade on them before they come. And what I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to be a kamikaze, I'm just trying to weaken them so that the grenade does more damage. He's right there now, so he's... Now you've got the champions. So... When he comes into view there, that's when you know what you're going to get. You know now, you know you're going to get cha your, your next big wave. So I'm going to just charge this grenade and throw it out here. Hopefully, ads will jump in. And we're going to try and take... I went after this champion a little bit too fast. Because there's just too many ads out. So you want to try and clear some of the ads before you go after the champions. One of the champions, though, is like Houdini. And it happens to me every time. And from this point on, once we take out these ads, you can shoot through the grills of this, these stairs as well, as you'll see there. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. One of the champions will go down, and these are the solar champions, which the solar captains, which is good, because I never thought I'd hear myself say this about champions in a, in a, in a GM. They are the easier ones to take down. The arc ones, because obviously GM modifiers. Uh, arc damage, you do, you take more damage from arc. So now we'll just see what we can get done here. Just 
try and take as many of these little lads. And we want one of these champions. This is this is the ideal place to take a champion. M maybe not exactly where he is now. We'd like him more to the right because another thing that I haven't said about Tiku is, is the explosion you see there, that's perfect. We're not going to be able to take him out now because Tiku's the explosion does really sometimes make them go like that. They will just move. So what... That's the perfect position there, where he is now, that's perfect. So we need him to teleport back into that grenade. Don't want him too much to the left of where you are, because they will teleport. They will, uh, the explosion, as you can see there. Put myself again in a bad position, because, well, I haven't, but Tikus has. And, right, so... Just melee him. Didn't expect a, a dreg to be there, but I'm good with ammo. These champions are just the most annoying. So as I say, you want one of these champions. There he is. He's in a perfect spot. Because it, I'm really going to have to like get some explosive damage on him to get him to move. Uh, but, as you can see, didn't matter how much damage I was doing. He still ran. The second champion is an absolute nightmare. So what I decided to do here, he wasn't he wasn't getting to he wasn't getting to res. I took a chance here, and uh, <laughs> they rezzed anyway. <laughs> I just absolutely hate these champions, and luckily. Uh, luckily, he's, he's, he's stayed there, but I, I don't even know what to say, I'm so, even watching this, it's boiling me. That champion that just ran out, the champion that just ran out, he's going to continue, this, this is, I think, I think it's a ridiculous thing uh, to have to put up with. So... This is my mini rant about, about, and this is a follow on from Shadowkeep, because in Shadowkeep I said that having the way that they done <clears throat> the champions, uh, this is the perfect place, just real quick, this is the perfect place, and you'll notice, if it's this time, you'll notice, now we are getting explosive damage which is moving them. Uh, I've noticed that if these champions start taking too much damage for their own li liking, they will just start to regenerate, regardless. So you can see there how much how much simpler that was to take him out. Right? This champion here, talk about being evasive. It's it's laughable what's going to happen with this champion. He's literally going to teleport in. And then teleport out before I've even got a chance. Constantly. I could speed this section up. Because the, the, nothing's going to happen for the... I could speed this section up. But I want you guys to see what I had to deal with. And this happened every time. It's one champion. Just constantly. He's upstairs. He's chilling. He's got... He's on, he's on upstairs kind of veranda. Uh, and because I'm trying to get platinum, obviously, uh, I, I, I probably could have went downstairs and started damaging these, uh, these, uh, now I thought I had them here, I thought, I thought it was going to be good. I'm getting my shots on them. We're getting crits. I thought we were gold here. And then he just started regenerating. And then ran away. I was so. Uh, it's the reason why I don't do in-game commentary. I'm just. I'm. I'm just now deciding that I know what's going to happen here now. What's going to happen is this barrier champion. I'm going to be able to kill him when he's going to let me. There's no way I can engineer this any faster. 
So while I'm waiting for him, uh, I'm just going to take out some of these. I'm just going to keep taking ads out. It's it's really annoying, and and uh, when I've been in here with fire teams, as I say, I've done this quite a bit. When I've been in here with fire teams, because of the the amount of damage you're putting on these these uh, champions, see I'm running back upstairs. Nightmare. Uh, because of the amount of damage you're putting on the champions, they never really get a chance to behave like that. But, uh, yeah, this champion, this one champion, done this every time. Just kept showing his face at the bottom of the stairs and then running away. I And even, you're going to see as well, I'm even going to get him into the position I got the other one in, roughly. He is going to go there eventually. And even then, he was just like, nah. Never even got a chance to stop him there. And and when you know he's about, it, it's kind of difficult to to go out and get ammunition because is he has he come downstairs? Is he in the channel to the left? I'm not sure that this should be a thing. And I'm I'm, I'm in Shadowkeep. I said the way that they'd done. Uh, the way that they'd done champions, I didn't agree with. I didn't think it was good, good, a good design choice to just go. Uh, we're just going to put more champions in the same place, especially with overloads. I don't think that's a good idea. Barriers as well, uh, not not great. Right, so I've got them in the spot here, right? I'm getting put the grenade on them. Good numbers. Getting the crits. He doesn't care. Another stop on him. I'm still getting good numbers. Thought I was going to kill him here. I thought to myself, if I can, if I can get him to the point where I can finish him, I'll just run out and, and do a finisher. As you can see, I'm hitting him. He's regenerated his health and just ran upstairs. As you can see, if you could have heard what I was saying there. Jesus. I would not have been able to... There would have been no ads on this video. I was absolutely infuriated there. Because I know how long you have to wait sometimes for this champion. That I had him in the perfect spot. And he just was like, no, I'm not so... It's almost like he was... You know, I could make loads of jokes here. Uh, but... And, and, and trying to be serious about it, it was almost like uh, the AI was like, oh, the character's not supposed to be here. We need to get back to where we're supposed to be. I probably could have backed off. The only thing I didn't try was backing off, uh, moving to the other side of the map, and just allowing him to come out. I didn't try that. This whole time, right? Uh, this whole time, you see the champions coming down. I'm not even bothered about him right now because I don't need him where he's where he is. This whole time, I've I've literally, uh, if I had have took that champion out, boss would have been dead by now. If I, if the champion would have if I'd have stopped him. I, I, well, the boss might not have been dead. If, I, if, I, if I'd have got him as fast as I got the other champion, the boss would have been almost dead because, I mean, what? We, we still got 15 minutes of the video left. Uh, yeah, the bo I'm not going to get him here. Uh, do I get him here? I don't think so. It's, it's, it's just... I don't think it's a... It's it's a good way to, to actually do stuff. Maybe I do get him here actually. Because I think I, I think as I said earlier, I think what I decided to do was the minute I can finish him I'm finishing him. Nope. <laughs> I didn't think I got him there. I didn't think I got him there. That is how bad it's the You just look at how uh, overload champions normally behave. That is not the way they behave. This champion, for whatever reason, it's like he's not supposed to be down here 
and the AI just keeps trying to force them back away from, you know, most other, most other, uh, most other enemies are looking to get into a position, like, you see, that shank is, those shanks are trying to get into positions where they can do damage to me, and, and that overload, for whatever reason, is trying to get into positions where he can run away from me. <laughs> we want him, ideally, as I've said, we want him, uh, we want him uh, not there. And it puts you in, a, so it puts me in a position now because I need ammo. I'm running out of bow ammo with this guy. We want him over there. And I think, again, I think I don't get him. I think I finished him. I thought I had him here. And I'm wondering, and I have wondered about overloads quite a bit. See, he's regening his health in between me hitting him. If I get a stop here, maybe I get him here. Uh, I have wondered whether the grenades, putting the grenades halfway, is is such a good a, a good idea. No, <laughs> it's so frustrating. So frustrating. Should I have switched? Probably not. Probably not. But again, I, oh, how frustrating is this? I got to this part. Is it, the, my first one took me, as, as I've already said in the video, if you count getting to the first kind of major room, uh, that was me pressing every button on my handset as fast as possible because I was so frustrated. Because <laughs> what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. You just, you know. So, if, uh, so four or five times if you're counting. I think it's four times if you're counting getting to the first room w w with the wizards and the, the, the overload and the barrier. This run took me th three attempts this morning and every time I got here. So I got to the boss every attempt, right? Uh, and I actually got chased down the stairs by a marauder, and I had no ammunition left. So I couldn't actually push, I couldn't fight back, I was waiting for ammo to come. So, I've been in, I've been in these positions. I mean, he never even came down the stair there. I've been in these positions, I do not think it's, it's a good, I don't think it's, a great design, to be fair, to have this happen. So I decided to go up here, and this is where I found out, oh, there's still, a, still an alt champion. So, unfortunately for him, he decides to push me, and as I say, Adept Big Ones just really does a good a good job. Uh, it's much <laughs> it, it, it's kind of It's kind of like having... Uh, a little bit of Vorpal alongside a boss spec, or a little bit of major, in with the boss spec. It's, it's it's very good. It's like it's like a a, a a cross. It's not having both of them at the same time. <clears throat> it's like a cross between having Vorpal and and boss spec. Can't damage them now because here come the shanks. This is the most evasive captain. Of all time. Now, I can say for certain, if I had have killed the barrier champion, the overload champion when he first come out, boss would have been dead by now. It's that overload champion. It's it's Trevor's Trevor's long lost cousin. So are we going to get him here? Doubtful. I can't even remember when I actually got him. You know, so I just like went, nah. I think this is where I thought I was going to get him because normally he'd have ran away. I think this is where I thought I was going to get him. <laughs> and he ran away. I'm pretty sure that the only thing I can think of is it's the grenade. And 
And he just is, is like so bad with the teleporting. After we, right, so, so we spoke enough about, because I, I just wanted you guys to get a sense of how frustrated I was with this champion. Uh, once we take out this, this overload, right, uh, we're going to get another wee, we're probably going to get another wave of ads, but what's going to happen is, uh, it's going to come a point, we're going to get some, uh, going to get another wave of ads, like what we had before with the Arc Captain and the Resilient, there we go, I knew it was at the bottom of the stairs that I finished them, so it only took me 12 minutes, 15 minutes or something, to kill that overload, to kill, to kill that champion. And I'm not sure, apart from making sure my weapons are reloaded, top tip, um, I would have killed him if I had my machine gun reloaded, I reckon. Make sure, you know, when you're going to damage ads, make sure your weapons are reloaded. Uh, so yeah, so so now that we've, we, we've took down these ads, we've got a Nova, uh, just going to make sure that the boss can is in a position to be damaged, which he's not. So we're going to see if we can put a grenade on one of these smaller. Now the reason I didn't bother clearing these is because I didn't want the boss. I didn't want the boss to be mobile while I was still dealing with a. It's just that one. He will constantly teleport. So I started I started damaging this one from outside and I was like, what the hell am I doing? And I think I went back inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what am I doing out here damaging this one? What about the ads come? So, again, another good thing about the swarm, because match game is on here. Uh, I found out in one of my previous runs match game will melt a shield I mean it's got 60 in the mag and it melted through a void shield right and still took just about half one of these servers health healths off uh, after it had already beat the shield that's 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 phenomenal that's that's cracking damage so for me it's it's you know you can get vorpal on it it would be interesting so interesting to see how good Vorpal would be coupled with Adept Big Ones. I'm not finished to try with the, the, the GMs this week, so maybe we'll get one, but I'm going to be honest, if I get another Kill and Win Slideways one, I think I'm going to pull my hair out. Who puts Slideways on a machine gun? Uh, somebody somebody that, that plays a lot of Crucible. Uh, ah, I hear you say, I can hear somebody thinking... Yeah, but if you'd if you'd have had that on and just slid, you'd have reloaded your weapon. Good call. Uh, so this is the, the, the this is the big wave. We took out the the arc, the the, the void the void servers, the little ones. This is the resilient wave. We'll call this the resilient wave because this is where you have the resilient dreg and the resilient vandals, and you should have two arc shielded captains. Now, as you can see, time is jotting on there was and this is what I, I was saying about uh, being able to do damage uh, at this point when the re the resilient wave is out I believe he is static I could be wrong I am wrong there is a point he just goes into one position is it in his last health bar he just goes down into the center of the map. See that marauder? Yeah, that was the... I, th I believe that was the marauder that might have come and chased me the last time. So at one point, the boss just goes away and stays in... And from, what I can, what, from what I can remember, stays in the middle of the map. And I just... It's, it's not yet. I think I've got to throw my Nova at him. Maybe it's the last half of his health, health ball. And I, I eventually... So, what, so what's going to happen now is I'm just going to keep... Clearing ads, making sure that I can move freely outside. I know there's another Marauder. There always is. There's always one more. I always operate on the, the assumption that there's one more. 
And I'm just trying to weaken, weaken Sapix. And just put it on him with, with, uh, with me Machini. Really good damage for a machine gun. Really good damage. Another wave of shanks. Don't mind if I do. Put that grenade over there. Take out those four, hopefully. There we go. Then we'll have the three in the doorway to the left, and then we're going to have the three over the other side. There, I, I'm, I'm still of the the way of mind, the way of thinking that there are arc captains up. And you, you probably know this: overloads and normal shielded. You've got the 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 melee ones with just the arc shielded. You've got the melee, and then you've got those uh, uh, constant stream of arc damage captains. It's those ones we don't really want to have to deal with. And I don't think these are those ones. They might be. So I'm just going to have a peek. Grab some ammo. No, he's not static yet, but at some point I think he does. He does go static. I'm, I've weakened him. So I'm just like putting it on him with the machine gun. See how stable that thing is. Mad stable. So he's moved away. I think I can go out. I'm just going to put the Nova on him. Now, you have to be very kind of careful with the Nova, really. Because it's just when you don't expect him to. He can teleport and you'll mess with the Nova. So I always try and leave it until... Here is where another the the resilient wave that we that I was I think uh, this is the resilient wave where he goes static. So uh, what 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 we're planning on doing is just you see there there's the arc captain. So it's when the arc captains come out. Uh, I think the boss is just kind of static. And this is the most dangerous wave because this is the arc stream resilient melt really hurt owl. This is sore wave. So we're just going to something out there. The grenade's doing some great work taking out. Uh, it's the, the resilient vandals and the cap, the captains are the ones that we're really kind of interested in. So I, I, I've got my grenade back. I'm just going to throw that out there and hopefully something walks into it. And they did. And even though it never killed them and they, di they didn't stay in there for very long, it was long enough for me to almost get my full grenade back. Throw that in there. Hopefully get something on something. I think that captain had too much health to expect the grenade to kill, kill him. So that's another resilient vandal out. So eventually what I'm going to do is here, is uh, once I get to the point where I'm needing ammunition, which I'm almost that uh, heavy, should I say, I'm going to go downstairs and there's going to be some ads downstairs. And that is where I came up with this... Uh, this... Uh, idea that I didn't need to kill. See here, there's some ads. I'm just going to melt them with the machine gun. The heavy. And this guy drops me heavy. And this is where I was like... Oh. So I, I, I shoot this. Go and grab this heavy. And then I'm like... There's, there's stuff out here. And then I was like, the boss is here. I wonder if I could just melt him. So... Grenade. And through this little gap. With the grenade and the machine gun ammo. Kill the boss. So I'm pretty sure when the resilience when the resilient wave comes out, you can You can just melt the boss. You don't have to clear the ads. There were still ads up when I killed them. And you can do good boss damage. And that's the run, guys. Uh thank you for listening. If whoever made it through the video, as I say, if, 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 to my subscribers and stuff, if you do need 
a run of this. I can, I can try and arrange a run for, for us. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Leave it in the comments uh, if you would like a run of this. And I will see you guys in the next video.